likes them. Yeah, first of all, let me say good evening to all of you. Thank you for the kind of work you are doing and the challenges that we have had to go through in the past few days. I myself, I call it a, a baptismal of fire. Because uh, if we're in my shoes, uh, you, you really appreciate what we went through. You see? Uh, first of all, let me admit that even though the party was aware that MPP will always resort to violence when we go to violence, the scale and the combination of state security forces against a party has never happened in the history of Ghana. I have gone to my elections. We know you are most of you. Yeah. It is always either an uh, MPP uh, group against NDC group slugging it out, and then the police showing a little bias here and there. But for you to see the level of deployment, the sheer numbers, mm -hmm. the firepower, mm -hmm. and of course the fact that. These were not trained security personnel. Mm -hmm. We picked intelligence very late the previous night when they went and recruited people from the fact that the organizer even came, rushed to Sanko where we were training and people to come and tell us me and Jay Blanson and others the kind of weapon that we distributed. What happened in Adobosh? The people they picked them there. So we pick all these things. And we have some of our colleagues and people there. And the plan they were hatching, and the extent to which they wanted to go. If you have all this information, we thought that if the movie on this violence, it would be late yeah, yeah. in the evening. Mm -hmm. When they realized they are, they, are, they are not winning and they want to use. In fact, they did everything, including the printed ballot boxes, which were going to be put in the little piece of and others. In the heat of the day, when they come and they want to rest, as if they want to restore violence, they take it and then they, they we had all those information. So we thought that look, this thing will go late. So let's watch how it begins. Uh, some of our security guys, I don't want to mention them, I mean, they tried to put some teams together. But when the thing started, the rate at which it came, in fact, if you were with me, when I went to the legal hospital and saw the blood flow mm -hmm. and the life-threatening injuries, and I was getting called from Baalishi, from uh, Abelene Bay, from East Lekon, from it's like coordinated. So when I saw this thing and the calls were coming, I thought that look, this thing was coordinated, and if we are not careful, the level of casualties yeah. we cannot handle. So I spoke with one or two of our intelligent couples and they said, oh, let's wait till about 9.30 and see how the situation. When I got to the PC stand, the house was, there was it was chaotic. The blood flow, the everything, the PC himself, before I could get him, I had to go through the hall, go to another hall, go to the third place. And the whole place was shook. And the cry of our party people was that look. We can't do this election because we don't want to die. And there was pressure on me. So I called here and unfortunately, around the same time, one of us was looking at six came with my sister and came with me. So we had to do some consultation with the candidates and then weigh their options and see. We didn't have, we were not in the state of preparedness to call for even reinforcement from anywhere because. As uh, Captain Hazid Juma said, how do you call people with bare hands to go and face this force? Hmm. Any intelligent person will say that. Let's weigh the option. This is a by election. When we even win the seat, it doesn't make any. Why should they strong people? Because the, the tendency was that hawks were being <coughs> unleashed into the constituency. And their determination is to mow them down as many as possible to let the hawks and others know that look, you are nothing. So, why can't we prevent that? At the same time, there was mixed communication about the number of deaths. 
And it was all over the place that I already two people in my head. And as a party leader, how do I encourage people to go and face this fire and die? So I had no option. I had no option. That is why I was tactical in saying that we are withdrawing our party agent. Because you see, we are not in charge of the elections. We can't stop the election. People who are leaving their homes to go and vote, I don't have control over them. I can't ask them not to vote. But I had control over people that I have deployed as party people. And they were under attack. And so the best I can do is that and they were in various places. I did not know what was happening to them. And so once I have a fair idea of what was happening, to save them, the best thing is to record them and bring them to a center where we can either brief them and decide whether to go back or not to go back. So my brothers and sisters, it was a very, very difficult decision. Again, at the same time, we also thought that if we continue this election to the end and we win, the violent aspect will be uh, swept aside. If we also lose, we have gone through the full hall. So the discussion will be normal electoral violence. So tactical withdrawal was to, was to then place the issue in proper context so that every focus will be on what the government will do. And that is what we have largely succeeded in achieving. Because you see, for the first time, you and me, they have never waded into this issue. EU delegation had called one of our senior comrades and said that, look, they are going to rethink their funding of the 2020 election. Because EU, you know EU is a major uh, stakeholder in terms of funding. And my worry and letter was the fact that in situations like this, you may disagree with the decision, but you don't have to challenge leadership decisions. And in the middle of this, some people decided to shoot at this person. For me, it was the most unfortunate thing that happened. Because when our people are being mowed down and they are being killed, and leadership has given a certain direction, you need to. There was pressure on me from some angles that I should change the process. I said, I will never change the process. I spoke with a lot of people. I said, This is a decision that I believe is in the interest of the party. They might be opposed to it, but when who has started reflecting on the whole process, there are people who come here to. Initially, we were angry with you. But uh, I mean, you have Chief Ashton Soka in our meeting saying, Chief, thank you. I said, Why? He said, If you are not taking this decision, I don't know how my men would have gone back to town. <laughs> the issue is that they had brought the Kandahar boys. And the Kandahar boys <clears throat> know our boys from Tamil. So it was a targeted, you know, it was a targeted attack. So once they spot you, they invite them. So they would have done it. And then, around that time, my people were so defenseless and they have packed themselves in pickups. And so, cordon off and helming them was very, very easy. And they had not anticipated all these things coming. So, it hasn't been easy. But uh, for me, how we take the battle from here is most critical. It's a question of mind game. That have come to play. We need, I was here because I thought that I should come and lift your small town and let you know that it was not a cowardice decision at all. It was a strategic decision which will benefit us. Once, once we are focusing our attention on the Aku family, and in fact, I think that this whole thing, we should not focus too much on the IGP. In fact, a police woman called me and said, ask for them, they regard the IGP as a civilian because. The man is busy and retired. And for them, he's a civilian. He's just a caretaker because he has retired. And once you are retired as an IGP, and that this came from a police woman. And so, even though we bash the IGP, I think that the whole thing was political. So we must situate the communication on the president, who is the commander in chief and who controls the security agencies. And how he has shown his true colors as a very violent person because we traced that incident gradually from when he became a fly bearer and what he did to his own chairman and others and created a culture of silence and beat people up and did all sorts of things and have brought it into governance and 
So we need to expose him so that tomorrow, as my brother said, the bed decides decides that we are also organizing ourselves, which of course we are going to organize and organize well. <laughs> then gradually we have shifted the attention onto the people. In fact, when people will be here of violence in violation, we will be taking up our visible forces and then we will quietly you know, doing our own thing. So this is uh, the briefing that I want to and say that it is the party itself is also going to uh, come out of a number of policy initiatives. First, we are going to set up a security and intelligence unit within the party and appoint a national coordinator, regional coordinator, and constituency coordinators. We will be taking some of our intelligent people, BNN people, national security people, and others, and then so that we can lead and plan effectively. Because you see, the military people are military people. The appreciation of security issues goes beyond what we can go on. You see? So when we came and uh, Kenan Sajidjima was briefing FEC and was saying that, as far as he's concerned, he will never order people without weapons to go and face people before the election. So those of them, these are people who advise us that look, if we decide, our boys came here, they were so angry, they wanted to, to move into the streets. What are you going to do? We are just going to endanger the lives of people. The second thing also is that after this intelligence unit, uh, the power of protection unit, which we decided to set up, I think that this same committee will help us to see how to, you know, put it up. And again, we are also uh, going to look at how to provide security for our leading members and our leading communicators. That is also going to be looked at very critically. It all requires a lot of resources. And uh, I want to assure you that as long as I've been the leader of the party, my, my approach to elections and security has completely changed from what happened. Wow. And we need to marshal all the human and material resources to move it. Uh, yesterday I was speaking with him and I said that look, uh, we have to get to a driver. Probably one of our retired security people who can still drive and at the same time give you protection. Yeah. Covert and covert operations. Yeah. Uh, we'll go after them. Yeah. But we'll not go after them face to face. Yeah. We'll have to use tactical approaches <laughs> to, make, to make life very uncomfortable for some of them. We will target some people. Yeah. And we will let the people know that their life is in danger. And then once they know their life is in danger, they themselves will be careful. As for that one, I want to assure you that we will go all out. <laughs> when it comes to this game, but we are better than them. <laughs> the security and future survival of our country is at stake. So, first of all, our people have identified a number of them. Yes. I don't know whether you have heard, but somebody has told me that one of them is dead in Boko. Yes. Yes. Yeah, one of them is dead in Boko today. Whether heart attack or other. <laughs> You see, okay. three days ago and yesterday, those who were living in Nibba and Rondobi, nobody has slept in this house. So you see that now we have a tactical advantage. Nobody has slept in this house. They even went to attack parents. So my moms have to come in and plead for their parents. Because one of the days, one tells us, people also start capturing your mothers and fathers and keeping them hostage until you show yourself up. <laughs> so we need to. Go back quickly on the drawing board and strategize. But the communication is very critical. I have had calls from senior police officers who say that look, we salute you. And that this is the time that we are going to unveil the real faces behind. The police are not happy. Yes. Because they have been trained. They have a reputation to protect. You are going to bring people on the streets. You put police uniform on them and you are giving the police bad name. So there are several police people who are not happy. And you see, it is also shifting the support of the police back to us. Because you know, in 2016, the police were against us. So that is that. <coughs> the other aspect is the EC chain. You see, 
we must wage a relentless war on this issue. I mean, she doesn't want to see my baby because why she sees me? <laughs> but I have told her. Look at the statement that she made. Mm. When we went to help, you said, oh, this one, it is you. It is NDP, NDC, your usual tax. And then I said, look, but I said, you know, you know, you know what you're talking about. As a commissioner, do you know what you're talking about? So I think we need to take care to the cleaners. Sharp, sharp, sharp. The civil society organization, religious organizations. Exactly. Especially the Peace Council Church. Exactly. Uh, for the first time, I will endorse in sorting. Thank you.